ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما وبعد Indeed all praises and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise and seek his help. We ask for Allah's forgiveness. We take refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and from the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, there is none that can misguide him. And whomsoever Allah allows to be misguided because he does not want guidance, there is none that can guide him. I bear witness and testify that there is no god no deity no object worthy of our worship except allah alone without any partners and i bear witness and testify that nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is allah's slave and his final messenger may the peace and blessings of allah ta'ala be upon our prophet upon his family upon his companions and upon all those who follow him till the day of judgment I begin my khutbah today by making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our siyam, our qiyam, our tilawa of the Qur'an, our sadaqah and all the good deeds that we performed in the blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all those good deeds and may Allah make them a means of attaining his forgiveness on yawm al-qiyamah. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. The Salaf of this Ummah, our pious predecessors, six months before the blessed month of Ramadan used to begin, they used to make dua to Allah, saying, Ya Allah, allow me to witness the blessed month of Ramadan. Allow me to live till the blessed month of Ramadan. Six months before the month of Ramadan used to come, they used to begin asking Allah to allow them to witness Ramadan. After the month of Ramadan came to an end, the Salaf, they used to ask Allah for the next six months, Ya Allah, accept the deeds that we performed in Ramadan. So following the footsteps of the Salaf, our pious predecessors, we also should continue making dua to Allah, that Allah accepts the good deeds that we do in Ramadan as well as outside Ramadan. Because my brothers and elders, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept our good deed no matter how many good deeds we have done no matter how rewarded the deed might look if Allah does not accept it all the deeds will go to a waste the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam he was commanded by Allah to build the Kaaba the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibrahim alayhi salam fulfilling the command of Allah he built the Kaaba after building the Kaaba what dua did Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam make to Allah? They said, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta sami'ul alim. O oh, our Lord, accept this from us. Accept this deed of building your house from us. Ponder here for a moment. Ibrahim alayhi salam is fulfilling the command of Allah. Allah commanded Ibrahim alayhi salam to build the Kaaba. So he built the Kaaba. There was no need for Ibrahim alayhi salam to then make dua to Allah to accept the act because it's a command of Allah. Yet look at what Ibrahim alayhi salam is teaching us. That if Ibrahim alayhi salam after, after building the Kaaba, 
he needed to ask Allah to accept it from him. What about you and I? Many of us, we become amazed. We become happy with the deeds that we have done. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not accept it, all those good deeds will go to a waste. Now, now that Ramadan has come to an end, what is the duty of a Muslim? I mentioned many points in the khutbah that I gave on Eid. I would just like to mention those points again as a reminder, as reminders benefit the believers. The first duty for you and I is my brothers and elders. First of all, our hearts are sad. Our eyes are full with tears. Our cheeks are damp with the water that has come out, with the tears that has come out from our eyes due to Ramadan coming to an end. We are missing Ramadan. And how can we not shed tears when Imam Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah, the great scholar, he said, how can the believers not shed tears with Ramadan coming to an end when he does not know if he's going to live till another Ramadan? How can the believers not cry? How can the believers not shed their tears when they know that next Ramadan they might not be here? Now there are many people who are happy that Ramadan has come to an end. They are happy that they don't need to stand in the Taraweeh prayer for long hours. They are happy they don't need to stay away from food and drink. And there are others who are shedding their tears due to Ramadan coming to an end. Which group are we from? Are we from the group that are happy that we don't need to fast anymore for another year? Are we happy that we don't need to stand in prayer anymore? Or are we sad with the farewell of Ramadan? This is a question we need to ask ourselves. Now, what is our duty after Ramadan? First of all, is we should continue worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first duty. That we cannot stop worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole purpose of Ramadan was to make us good Muslims. The whole purpose of Ramadan was to train ourselves to become obedient slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The whole point of Ramadan was to make those people who used to commit sins to stop their sins. Those people who disconnected from the Quran to connect with the Quran. Those people who were disconnected from Allah to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the purpose of Ramadan. As a verse that we have heard so many times, the purpose of Ramadan was so that you may gain the consciousness of Allah. So that you may gain the taqwa of Allah. What is taqwa? I'm sure we've all memorized it. It is to place a barrier between yourself and the anger of Allah. Stay away from all those things that will anger Allah. That will make Allah angry with you. If you stay away from it, you have gained the taqwa of Allah. You have gained the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question we need to ask ourselves, how many of us have attained this taqwa? One entire month Allah gave to train ourselves to become better Muslims. Have we trained ourselves to become better Muslims? Am I showing that I have benefited from Ramadan? Now is the time we can really see who has benefited from Ramadan. Because in Ramadan, everyone is fasting, so I am fasting. Everyone is praying, so I am praying. Everyone is doing iftar, so I am doing my iftar. Everyone is coming to the taraweeh prayer, so I am coming to the taraweeh prayer. Everyone is giving sadaqah, so I am giving sadaqah. The real test is now. Ramadan has come to an end. Who has benefited from Ramadan? Our actions will show this. If we continue coming to the masjid and praying the five daily salawat, it is a sign, inshallah, Allah has accepted our Ramadan. If we are reciting the Quran on a daily basis, inshallah, this is a sign, Allah has accepted our Ramadan. If we are a better Muslim now after Ramadan, it is a sign, inshallah, Allah has accepted our Ramadan. From the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we learned that when the month of Ramadan comes, the doors of Jannah are open. The doors of Jahannam are closed. The shayateen, they are locked up. We learned this from the hadith. But now that Ramadan has come to an end, the shayateen are no longer locked up. They are let loose. And what will the shayateen try and do? Will they come and whisper to us to pray the prayers? Will shaitan come and wake us up for fajr? Will shaitan come and tell us to recite Quran? No. Rather, shaitan will try and make up for the one month he was not able to misguide us. He will try and make up that one month he was not able to disconnect ourselves from Allah. He will try and do that. He will try and make us miss our prayers. 
He will try and make us disconnect from the Quran. He will try and make us disconnect from the masjid because shaitan does not want any good for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Quran clearly, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ فَاتَّخِذُهُ عَدُوًّا Indeed, the shaitan is a clear enemy to you. So treat him as an enemy. Take him as an enemy. Don't take, it, don't take him as a friend. And then Allah says, إِنَّمَا يَدْعُوا حِزْبَهُ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْ أَصْحَابِ السَّعِيرِ that the only thing that the shaitan commands you and I to do is to make us the people of Jahannam. That is the target of shaitan. To make you and I fall into the depths of Jahannam. He wants us to burn in Jahannam. He wants us to be the inhabitants of Jahannam. Allah is warning us. Don't take shaitan as your friend. In Surah Yasin, Allah says, Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adama alla ta'budu shaitan innahu lakum aduwun mubeen. Allah says, O son of Adam, did you not promise me that you were not going to worship shaitan? Did you not promise me that you were not going to obey the shaitan and you were going to obey me? What has taken you away from me? And then Allah says, Innahu lakum mubeen. Again, the shaitan is a clear enemy to you. So my brothers and elders, the target of shaitan is to make us people of Jahannam. Is it the shaitan that we are going to respond to? Or is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are going to respond to? So the first point is we need to continue being steadfast upon the deen of Allah after Ramadan has now come to an end. Now the first way we can stay steadfast upon the deen of Allah is by asking Allah to keep us steadfast upon his deen. We need to make dua to Allah constantly that Ya Allah keep my heart firm upon your religion. Secondly, we need to hold on to the Quran and Sunnah and as, as I will come on to this insha'Allah One of the most often quoted du'as of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his sujood was Ya muqallib al-qulub, sabbit qalbi ala deenik Which means, O controller of the hearts, keep my heart firm upon your religion In another narration, keep my heart firm upon your obedience This was a du'a the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam constantly made in his sujood. The Sahaba has asked, O Messenger of Allah, why do you always make this dua for? What is the reason? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Indeed, the hearts of people are between the two fingers of Ar-Rahman, meaning Allah, and the fingers of Allah are according to His Majesty. We do not know, we do not know how, but we believe in the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indeed, the hearts are between the fingers of Allah, Ar-Rahman, he changes the direction of the hearts in whichever direction he wants. So today a person might be pious, tomorrow he might not be pious. Today a person might be praying in the first stuff of the masjid, tomorrow he might not be praying. Today a person might be upon Tawheed, but before the end of his life he might die upon Kufr and Shirk. No one knows how a person's life is going to end. Therefore it is necessary that we constantly ask Allah, Ya Allah, Keep our hearts firm upon your religion and let us die upon La ilaha illallah, upon Tawheed. Because there are so many stories which I don't have time to mention. Where the Salaf of the past, they have narrated as an eyewitness that there were many people who used to call out the Adhan for 40 years, 50 years. But later on they died as a Christian. They died as a Jew. Many people used to come to the masjid, pray in the first Saf. But those people that died with alcohol in their mouth. Many people, there were people who recited the Quran, but later on, on their, in their life, they became misguided and they died while singing songs. These are real life incidents which I don't have time to mention. The point here is, we need to make dua to Allah for steadfastness. I ask a question to myself and everyone. When was the last time we asked Allah, Ya Allah, keep our hearts firm upon your religion. When was the last time? How many of us know this dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam read so many times in his sujood? How many of us know this dua? Short, simple, powerful dua. How many of us have memorized this dua? And those of us who have memorized it, how many of us put it in action? Therefore, it is necessary that we ask Allah that he allows us to continue worshipping him and that he allows us to die upon La ilaha illallah. A statement comes to mind, my brothers and elders. <coughs> When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passed away, the Sahabas, they were sad, they were grieved. They did not know what to do. Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he stood at the front of the masjid and he recited some verses of the Quran to calm the Sahabas down. And then he said, O Sahabas, 
those of you who used to worship Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, know that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. And those who used to worship Allah, know that Allah is al-hay, the ever-living, and he will never pass away. So I say a similar thing. Those of us who used to worship Ramadan, know that Ramadan has come to an end. And those who used to worship the Lord of Ramadan, know that Allah is al-hay, the ever-living, and he will never pass away. Allah is the Rabb of Ramadan, as well as the Lord of Dhul Ka'da, Dhul Hijjah, Shawwal, Muharram, the entire year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of everything. What shocks me and what amazes me is, how is it that people recognize Allah in Ramadan? They recognize the greatness of Allah in Ramadan. But, but as soon as Ramadan comes to an end, they forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can this be possible? You have worshipped Allah for an entire month. Then from the day of Eid, how can you disconnect from Allah? How can you forget the greatness of Allah? The Rabb that has given you everything you wanted and the things you did not even ask for, Allah gave you that. How is it that you disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Imagine my brothers and elders, these beautiful eyes that Allah has given us. Imagine if Allah was to tell us that if you want to use the eyes that I have given you, you will have to pray a thousand rakats every night. If you don't pray them, I will take your eyesight away. How many of us will be able to pray a thousand rakats every night? Imagine if Allah was to tell us that if you want to continue using the hearing that I have given you, with which you hear everything of the dunya, in order for you to continue using the power I have given you, you will have to give a thousand pound in charity every night. How many of us can do this? Yet is this what Allah commanded us? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all he wants is worship me alone without associating any partners with me. That is all Allah wants. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ O oh people, I have not created mankind and jinn for any other reason, for any other purpose, except that they worship me alone without associating any partners with me. This is the reason of our creation. This is the reason why we are breathing, we are sleeping, we are eating, drinking, to worship Allah, to establish the oneness of Allah in this dunya. How are we going to answer Allah on Yawm al Qiyamah? When we have not fulfilled the purpose of our creation. Allah reminds us in the Quran, O people, do you think that I have created you for a joke? Do you think I have created you for no reason and no purpose? And do you think that you are not going to return back to me? In Surah Al-Ghashiyah, inna ilayna iyabahum, thumma inna alayna hisabahum. Indeed, one day you are all going to return back to me. And indeed, one day you will all have to give account of how you have lived your life. Now, if we have not worshipped Allah, how on earth are we going to answer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Carrying on, my brothers and elders, is we need to protect and safeguard the five daily salawat. I cannot stress enough the importance of preserving the five daily salawat. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim, cannot remain a Muslim if he does not pray the five daily salawat. It is as simple as that. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim if there is no five daily salawat in his life. If a person does not pray, let not him dream about Jannah. You cannot even dream about Jannah if you're not a person who prays his five daily salawat. Again, my brothers and elders, in Ramadan, the masajids were full. Not only this masjid, every masajid you went to, the masjid is full for Dhu Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha. All the masajids are full, alhamdulillah. You and I, we came to the masjid. But why is it from the day of Eid, slowly but surely, these rows, they decrease and they end up with one row or two rows. Where are those Muslims gone? From the first day of Ramadan, the masjid became full. For 30 days, the masjid was full. From the day of Eid, the masjid, it decreases to one saf to two saf. I ask myself, and if everyone has the answer, please do answer me after the Jumu'ah khutbah. Where are those Muslims gone? From the day of Eid, why is it that the masjid... The rows, they decrease and they end up to one row, two rows. And guess what? It is those people who are praying before Ramadan, they are the ones who are standing in the row. As for the rest, they are gone. They have disappeared. We have proven to ourselves that we can come to the masjid. We have shown this, my brothers and elders. Why can we not carry on? Do you not miss the masjid? 
Do you not miss the four walls of the masjid? Did you not enjoy the joy and happiness when you stood near your brother who you did not even know? But together you prayed and you worshipped Allah. Did you not feel the unity within your heart? That is unity. When you come to the masjid and you stand near a Muslim brother who you might not even know and you worship Allah together, that is unity. That is love. You will not get this unity or love outside the masjid. So my brothers and elders, our iman, it wants us to worship Allah. This is what our iman wants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see us in the masjid. He wants to see us in the house of his house subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are we not going to respond to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what kind of behavior is this? Just think about this. What kind of behavior is this? That we come to the masjid in Ramadan, then outside Ramadan we forget the masjid, then the next time we come to the masjid is when there's a janazah prayer. What kind of attitude is this towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The next point I would like to mention is the recitation of the Quran. During Ramadan, alhamdulillah, many of us, we recited the Quran from cover to cover. Many have recited more than one times. The question and the point I want to mention now is we cannot disconnect from the Quran. We have to carry on reciting the Quran as much as possible. Yes, we might not have the amount of free time we had in Ramadan. We might not have that. We've got job, we've got school, we've got uni, we've got other things to do. But can we not spend half an hour every day reciting the Quran? Let's have this connection with the noble Quran, my brothers and elders. We are living in a time and age where even a six years old has a phone. A seven years old has a phone. A 10 years old has a phone. The young have a phone, the old have a phone. Everyone has a mobile phone. Everyone can easily download the Quran on their phones. Let's ask the question to ourselves. Have I got the Quran downloaded on my phone? And am I a person who recites the Quran from that app? If you go to Facebook, you will see the amount of hours you have wasted on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all the other social media platforms. You go there and you check the time, how much you have spent on that. And then go to the Quran app and you'll see the last time you read it was maybe six hours ago, maybe two days ago, maybe on the 27th night of Ramadan. Is this how we treat the noble Quran, the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Don't forget this Quran that we see, my brothers and elders, it might not be speaking today, but without a shadow of a doubt, this Quran is going to speak on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. The way if we were to stand outside and look in the sky and we can see that there is a sun there and we, don't, we do not doubt the existence of the sun, the same way we do not doubt the, ex we do not doubt the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said Al-Qur'an hujjatun laka aw alayk This Qur'an is either going to speak for you or it is going to speak against you. If you are a person that recited the Qur'an, understood the Qur'an, implemented the Qur'an as much according to your ability, then we hope inshaAllah the Qur'an will speak for you. But if you are a person who disregarded the Qur'an, disrespected the Qur'an, did not apply is halal and haram. We fear that the Quran might speak against you. So let's ask ourselves, how is my connection with the noble Quran? How is my connection with the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The pious predecessors of the past, they were willing and they were ready and they have given their life for the Quran. Can we not give 15 minutes of our time for the Quran? The reason why the Salaf were so honorable is because they were connected to the kalam of Allah. As soon as Muslims disconnected from the Quran, that's, that is when the Ummah is suffering so much. May Allah allow us all to connect back to the noble Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the intercession of the noble Quran. And lastly, I will mention in my first khutbah is carry on with all your good deeds that you did. This includes voluntary fast as well. We find the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever fasted the month of Ramadan, and then follow that up with six days of Shawwal, the month that we are in now, he will receive the reward as, he, as if he fasted the entire year. So those of us who can, we should fast six days of Shawwal. We should fast on Mondays and Thursdays. We should fast on any other day of the month as well. We should carry on with our charity. We should carry on with our Qiyamul Layl. We should carry on with all the good deeds that we did, did in Ramadan. We should continue with that. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ahabbul A'mal ila Allahi adwamuha wa in qal. The most beloved deeds to Allah are those which are done on a regular basis, 
even though they might be small in quantity. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us all. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ilil muslimin fastaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafoor rahim الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد. I would like to mention about the masjid for the last few minutes that I have of my khutbah. The masjid, my brothers and elders, it plays a great role in the life of a Muslim community. The masjid, the status of a masjid is not like that of the places of worship of other religions. The masjid, my brothers and elders. It plays a vital role in the society, just like the veins do in the body. We need veins, we need blood to run in our body, for our body to run. The same way we need a masjid in the community to increase our deen, to learn about our deen, our religion, to learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The masjid has been called the gardens of Jannah in this world. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا مَرَدْتُمْ بِرِيَاضِ الْجَنَّةِ فَرْتَعُوا When you pass by the gardens of Jannah, eat from its fruits. When the Sahabas heard this, they said, O Messenger of Allah, what is the garden of Jannah in this world? And what are its fruits? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the gardens of Jannah in this world are the massages. Are the masjid and the fruits are subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allahu akbar the masjid my brothers and elders is the best place on the face of this earth rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ahabbu albilad ila allahi masajiduha wa abghadu albilad ila allahi aswaquha the most beloved place on the face of this earth to allah are the masajids and the most hated place are the market places you and I right now, where are we sitting? In the masjid. Where are we sitting? In the most beloved place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Isn't this something we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for? Isn't this something that we should say alhamdulillah for? That Allah has granted us the ability, the strength to come to the masjid on the day of Jumu'ah. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. The masjid, the worshippers, the people that come to pray, everything that is associated with the masjid, they deserve respect and honor. They deserve respect and honor. Service to the masjid is a great act of worship, my brothers and elders. And it is the individual responsibility to maintain the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The masjid will intercede for a person. Just think about this. The masjid will intercede for a person. Who is that person? The person who spent his time for the masjid. The person who cleaned the masjid. The person who put effort in maintaining the masjid. No matter how small the act might be or how big the act might be that you do for the masjid, you will be without a shadow of a doubt rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Uthman radiallahu anhu narrated, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man bana lillahi masjidan bana Allahu lahu baytan fil jannah. Whoever builds a masjid in this world, Allah will build a house for him in jannah. In another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever removes dirt from the masjid or any type of rubbish that is in the masjid, he just picks it up, puts it in the bin to please Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah will construct a palace for him in Jannah. Not only that, I have mentioned many of times and I will continue mentioning. In the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there was a lady who used to clean the masjid of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is all she was known for. No other act has been mentioned regarding this lady. One night she passed away. The sahabas thought, let's not wake up the Prophet. Let's just wash her body, do the janazah and bury her. And that's what they did. In the morning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam woke up and he noticed that that lady cannot be seen. So he asked, where is that lady that used to clean the masjid every day? The Sahaba said, Oh Prophet of Allah, she passed away last night. We prayed her janazah and we buried her. We thought, let's not wake you up since you are sleeping. And she is not someone that's highly respected. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he could have said, that's good. You prayed her janazah, you buried her, that's good. That's something good you did. Is this what he said? He said, show me her grave. The Sahabas took the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi to the grave and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prayed janazah again. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the grave are full with darkness. It is dark, but it is illuminated when I make dua for them. Now, the point I want to mention here is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could have said, oh Sahabas, you have prayed her janazah, you have done good. What was the reason for the Prophet to pray the janazah again? It is to show 
the respect and honor that this lady has. What was she known for? She was known for cleaning the masjid of the, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what about the reward of that person who builds a masjid, who helps to construct a masjid, who gives time to the masjid? Imagine my brothers and elders, a community with no masjid. That means no salawat, no jumu'ah, no taraweeh, no eid, no sending our children to learn the deen of Allah. Masjid is important and it plays a vital role in the life of a Muslim. Now the point, a very important point and something again that shocks me and amazes me is during COVID time, when the massages were closed, did we not cry? Did we not cry to Allah and say, Oh Allah, open the doors of the masjid once again? When there was around one or two Ramadans that the masjid were closed and we could not pray the Taraweeh prayer, did we not cry in sajda and say, Oh Allah, open the doors of the masjid once again? And we were all crying. We were all shedding tears. Where are all those people now when the masjid is opened? Where are all those people that used to cry their tears? Allah opened the doors of the masjid so that we can come to the masjid. People were texting the imam and saying, when is the masjid going to open? When is the masjid going to open? And today when the masjid doors are open, rarely do we find the masjid full for the five daily salawat. Ask yourself the question, all these Muslims that we have gathered here today, wouldn't it look beautiful if the masjid was full like this at Fajr, at Zuhur, Asr, Maghrib, Isha? Won't the condition of the Muslim Ummah be different if the masajids were full like this for all the five daily salawat? Where are we going, my brothers and elders? How long are we going to be away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When is it that we are going to wake up to the reality that one day we are going to pass away? And with this, I end my brothers and elders with the blessings of Allah Ta'ala and then with your kind donations. This masjid has come so far. As you can see, the building work that is going on in the masjid. To, uh, during Ramadan, the work was stopped. But inshallah, now that Ramadan has come to an end, the masjid will continue with this building work. What I want to request everyone is to give as much as you can for the sake of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Mas this masjid, like any other masjid, has to be maintained and looked after. Looked after by who? You and I, the people Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chooses. And don't forget the people that give for the masjid, that serve the masjid, that spend for the masjid, they are the chosen people of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I end my brothers and elders, Many people used to come to the masjid and they used to be sitting in the first saf of the masjid like these people are. They pray taraweeh with us, they pray the salawat with us, they pray qiyamul layl with us, but today they are no longer in this world. And I can name around 10 to 12 people that used to come to this masjid and many people will know them. The question is, where are they now? They have left this dunya and they have entered their graves. It's been many, many years that they have passed away. It has been many, many years that they have passed away, but yet after many, many years, today we are remembering them on the day of Jumu'ah. Why? Be it because they have left a legacy. What was their legacy? They used to come to the masjid. Now we are saying so-and-so used to come to the masjid. So-and-so used to pray the taraweeh prayer with us. So-and-so used to pray the five daily salawat with us. We are remembering them with good words. We are making dua for them. We are asking Allah to forgive them and have mercy upon them. So the point here is, my brothers and elders, when we come to the masjid, we are leaving a legacy. So that the day we pass away, people will say, so-and-so used to come to the masjid. May Allah forgive him. After we pass away, many, many years will go by. If we were a person who used to come to the masjid, people will make dua for us. If we want the duas of the musalleen, of the people who pray, we need to connect to the masjid. This is the point I want to make. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our mayyiteen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on all the Muslims that used to be connected to the masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive their sins. My brothers and elders, little do we know that we might not even live till next year. We don't know if we are going to find another Eid, Eid al-Adha, Eid al-Fitr, Ramadan. We don't know. Now that Allah has given us the time, use it for Allah's sake. Use it to do something that is beneficial. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the ability to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserves to be worshipped. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. And just to make us remember, death is just around the corner. And I mentioned on the day of Eid that there was a delivery driver who went to give delivery. While he finished giving his delivery, he wanted to enter his own car. He opened his car to enter, but a car from the other side was speeding, came, hit him, and he spot dead. But the question, do you know what's amazing? He had a six-month-old daughter that was just born. Six months ago, he had a daughter. 
Who is this daughter going to call father anymore? Little did this man know that I am not going to see my daughter anymore. Little did he know that this is the last time I'm leaving my house and I'm never going to return back home. So my brothers and elders, now that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us life, prepare for the afterlife. Prepare for the real life which is in the Akhirah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite the entire Muslim Ummah upon the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma salli wa salli wa barik ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Wa salli ala jami'i al-anbiya wal mursaleen. Wa salli ala al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimina wal-muslimat. Rabbana faghfir lana dhunubana wa kaffir anna sayyatina wa tawaffana ma'al abrar. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين يا رب العالمين وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وأقم الصلاة يرحمكم الله